Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Okay. Uh, here, we uh, uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> You're left-handed. Hmm. Then we should we should have switched sides. We probably should have. Yeah. Well, whatever. It's, <laughs> whatever. It's too late now. It's no, too late I'm now. I'm committed to this side. Man. Yeah. Okay. So Austin. So what are we going to talk about today? We are talking about oh blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. We're talking about places to travel in Japan. The places, particularly the places that we've been to. Yes. Right. So, I went to a place yesterday, actually. You went to a place? I went to a place, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Where did you go? I went to the park outside my house. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, that park is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty blessed. No, yeah. so when you say you went to a place, where? Wh- what was this place? I went to Mount Takao. Okay. And I climbed up it, which okay. sounds really badass, but until you know about Mount yeah, Takao, yeah, and yeah. it's like, it's kind of insulting that that's actually called a mountain. Yeah, yeah, I know. Because <laughs> it's like pretty much a hill yeah Taka- so. mount takao is like where people in tokyo want to go to like experience the atmosphere of hiking and without actually really hiking yeah 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 that's exactly what it was yeah so where when you like when you go hiking where do you like to go hiking um kind of just like random places um mm-hmm. i went down to uh like kind of near hakone Hakone? Kind of oh yeah, wander yeah. Wander around in the There's hills out there. Um, <laughs> wander around in the hills. I no, just, it's true though. I, like, I, I know, but I'm just imagining like when you say wandering around, I'm just imagining you're like lost, looking like a yeti with like a <laughs> straggly beard. Like I'm lost. Please help me. Yeah, man. Like I, I, uh, I mean, I'm I'm not going like full survival man yeah. mode, but like I've I've got um, you know, I typically bring like snacks. Okay. Like, just to spend a day out there if I get lost. Okay. Um, I've got like an axe. <laughs> that I take okay. with me. Okay. Um, it, not specifically for, you know, attacking things, but it's kind yeah. of like a utility thing. So it's got like a, a compass. It's got mm-hmm. like a little, like, um, was that Flint and Tinder thing? Yeah, so it's like, a sw- kinda... it's like a Swiss Army axe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Got it. It's pretty cool. Uh, I, I bought everything on Amazon. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So I just okay. ordered it and I got my, like, outdoors yeah. box. Um, but yeah, so uh, I, I've gone out to um, Odawara. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is still kind of near Hakone. Sorry, dude, dude, you're not saying it right. It's Odawara. 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 Well, that's a new one. I know, I know. It's just, it's, that's the American it's, way to it say sounds, it. It sounds like some kind of West Coast thing. I know. Like, yeah, bro, we're going to go to Odawara, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no, no, but that's like, yeah, so it's funny because like people talk about how Hakone, mm. you know, it's known for its own sand and stuff. It's yeah. for its hot springs, but, and I know that there's really good hiking too, Yeah, but I've never gone there for me like when Wait, i go you, hold on i'm sorry to interrupt you've never been to hakone i mean i've been to hakone but i've never gone hiking oh in okay 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 yeah all right carry on yeah 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 i know living living <laughs> in tokyo to for go. seven years and not going to hakone is kind so of what the hell is wrong with you <laughs> yeah but that's um you know so like um where where i would go hiking mm. is okutama oh sure yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Been out there it's like a good two hour train ride from Shinjuku. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was funny. You know, I used to actually um, work for a guy who was doing like this kids English class. Mm-hmm. And I told him that I had to really like sort out. This is like eight years ago. Okay. I told him I had to really sort out my life and I wanted to think about a lot of things. I wanted to go hiking. Like, you should go to Okutama, man. I was like, sure. And I went and it was great. I met with God up in Okutama. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to, I want to stop right here. Yeah. Like, why is it? Because I, I, I feel like I've experienced this too, but why is it like when you want to do a lot of reflecting, mm-hmm. like that's when you pick up hiking? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, you know, it's because you're alone. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get to think a lot. Speaking of aloneness, mm-hmm. um, so originally I had plans to go out to uh, Aokigahara this oh, weekend. Oh, you didn't go? No, we didn't go. What the heck, um, man? You should have so, told me. So the reason, the reason okay. why, it was, it was a last minute thing. So... Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I was going out with my buddy and another buddy of mine from work, mm-hmm. and uh, so one of one of the the my work buddy mm-hmm. he wasn't able to go out because I okay. think he had like some family emergency with his kids. So okay, okay, yeah, we postponed the trip. So you still want to come? We're we're going on the twenty fifth. You know, I could I could go. Um, you know the the thing is is I uh, sorry my my mic is like sinking. Hmm. I don't know why. So, um. You should told me, man, because then we could have yeah. done we could have like done this on yesterday. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was still gone all day yesterday. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, because we we went out to so uh, anyways. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So we canceled the trip and we went out to uh, to Kaosan and um, it was a really fun experience. Mm-hmm. Um, it it wasn't much hiking. 
Yeah, right. But uh, we we actually decided to just wander off the trail, mm-hmm. and we went over and saw like some ritual being done on a waterfall. What saw... ritual? Like like what? Do you yeah, mean? I think like uh, so you know like there's a temple up there, yeah, right? Yeah. So I think um, some like priests came over and were like. I'm not going to pretend to understand mm-hmm. what they were doing, but they were doing like some like ritual right okay. where the waterfall was happening. Oh, really? They were cool. Doing, like some singing and dancing and everything. Cool. So that was fun to watch. Um, we got to see. Uh, we didn't see any wild monkeys, but there was there was. Are like, there monkeys in town? Ta- yeah. Oh, yeah, really? There's uh, what are they? Macaques. The little, I had no idea. The little like I don't know. They're not that small. Like that big. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's there's some like captive macaques that some. Like, I guess, like a little zoo up there is just mm-hmm. having them do tricks and everything, which is kind of like, <laughs> yeah. But, wow, I, I see. I didn't know that there were monkeys in. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so, okay, so hiking options mm-hmm. is like Takao, Okutama, or Hakone. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty good. But where's so outside of Tokyo? Because yeah. like a lot of people when they travel, they would. They come to Tokyo, right? Mm. Outside of Tokyo, where's your favorite place to go in Japan? Ooh. My absolute favorite place. I'll, I'll tell mm-hmm. you. Like, um, I can't remember if I've said it on the channel yet. Yeah. I think maybe I've mentioned it, but um, Himeji. Himeji. Oh, yeah, no, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you haven't said it on the channel, but I've definitely... Yeah, I think we've about had this before. conversation before. Um, so there's a reason for that. Yeah. And... Uh, Himeji is not a particularly a special place. It's, um, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't even know if it's famous for anything other than it's, this castle, yeah, I well, guess. The ca- yeah, really. I mean, the, the place is called Himeji because of the castle. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I'll tell you when, so when I was in high school and mm-hmm. I was first coming out here, we were kind of doing like a, like a tour of Japan mm-hmm. week, mm-hmm. our first week here. And we were going from place to place. So we were going all the way from Tokyo all the way to Hiroshima. Okay. And so uh, we stopped in Himeji. Um, I don't know why, actually. Okay. Um, but we stopped there. And that was the first real time that it hit me mm-hmm. that I was in Japan. At Himeji. In Himeji. Like, Tokyo didn't do that for me. We, we visited uh, Yokohama, which mm-hmm. is kind of basically just Tokyo still. Yeah. Um, you know, I visited uh, Kobe, I visited mm-hmm. Osaka, I visited all these places. Mm-hmm. But Himeji was the first time that you just like, bam, you I were wonder, in Japan. I wonder what, what made it feel like that to you. So I'll tell you why. Yeah. Um, we, we, we went, actually, the first time I went, when I went on this trip, I, mm-hmm. I didn't go in the spring. We went in the summer. So there's okay. no soccer trees, but we went into the, like the, park yeah, where yeah, all yeah. the soccer yeah, trees yeah, yeah, are yeah. right next to the castle and if you've been to himeji castle it's like it's a beautiful castle yeah. it's like all white it's like really nice looking and everything mm-hmm. and um oh, sorry. Sorry. we <laughs> no just worries. get the skype notification all right that's gone now all right and you still use skype <laughs> i i only okay so so i have a video editor for my coffee channel sure and he uses skype so <laughs> i'm using skype for him mm. I That's I don't choose to use Skype. I, I, I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyways, uh, so we went out there, mm-hmm. and when I arrived, I was with a couple of my friends. Yeah, and uh, we found some like high school kids okay. that looked around our age, and we just like walked up to them and started talking to them. Mm-hmm. And uh, so eventually, we all just joined together, and it was like right around lunchtime. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was during the summer, so usually high school kids get out early. And uh, so we all decided to go have like a picnic, like okay. right in the Sakura trees. And so like uh, we we laid out a blanket. It was like mm-hmm. kind of like a really kind of like very Japanese. Yeah, picnic. you had Hanami there. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah pretty much. And um, yeah, just kind of looking around. It's like, you know, these high school kids are in their uniforms and everything. Mm-hmm. Um and you know they're eating bento Mm -hmm. we're we're eating just some random garbage that we picked up in the shinkansen train station and i yeah it just really like everything combined just kind of hit and i was like wow i'm in japan this is really cool like yeah so that's that's a really dear memory to me Mm -hmm. um because that that was kind of like the first time that i fell in love with this place yeah i mean so it's funny because a lot of people don't talk about Hanami as like a cultural thing. Yeah. People do like the picnic outside. I mean, and you said it wasn't like the 
the cherry blossom season or anything. No, so, no. But like, yeah, it's funny when you think about Hanami. Like, I don't know. I f- I feel like there's so many activities in Japan, or there there's at least in the, compared to the states. Yeah. Where you just go out to enjoy the view. Yeah. You're like Hanami is a thing that everyone does, and what does it mean? It means to watch the flowers, watch the sakura, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's very interesting, you know. Mm. But yeah, I, I can understand that. For me though, when I've done Hanami, like it just becomes a big drunk fest, and everyone's oh, like, I mean, hey, 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 "Hey, America, hi!" <laughs> yeah, I've 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 had my share of those. <laughs> yeah, those yeah. Too. yeah, yeah. Um, what about you? What's what's your favorite place? My here? favorite place, dude. Okay, this is gonna sound really um, how do I say, really unoriginal, but Kyoto for sure. <laughs> God, that's like the most unoriginal place. I know, you can I pick. know, dude. But so here's the thing, right? So the okay. reason why I got into really interested in Japan was not like anime or anything like that. Sure. That was kind of like my entryway. Yeah. But what got me after that was like the traditional art mm. and stuff. And so like the traditional culture, the traditional art, the traditional values, and um, like Kyoto is kind of like the embodiment of that. Oh, absolutely. So like my favorite place to go is the um, like also in um. In Kanazawa, the Higashichaya area, which is like yeah. the place built out of the 1800s, or, um, yeah, dude, my my mic for some reason at this angle is always slowly moving. This yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm I'm just doing it like here. Um, but yeah, so, so with Kyoto though, I don't know. It also kind of feels like home a little bit because it's it's um, it's very traditional. Yeah. And it's very like stratified. Like you're from Kyoto or are you just visiting? Or are you a foreigner who's not from, are you a transplant? Yeah. Cause that's how my hometown was. My hometown actually is the birthplace of the Navy. Yeah. You know, like back, we have history going back to like 1600, whatever. Mm. And, um, you're either like bred and born there, mm. born and bred there, or you're a transplant. You're not like one of the locals. Right. And so I guess, I'm used to that feeling, so it feels more like home to me there yeah. too. But I don't know, just like going, especially around the the Sanjo area, mm. there's just a lot of cool traditional stuff. Yeah, you know. I don't know. I one of these days I would like to spend a decent amount of time in Kyoto. Yeah, but there was there was a time when, for actually for my work, we were doing a special program, and I would actually go to Kyoto every weekend. Really? Yeah, it was okay. it was good, and I spent a lot of time there. And I wanted to spend more time there, but then my program ended, so I had to come back. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, so like, so for you, yeah. like if you could live somewhere that's not Tokyo, where would you want to live? Oh, man. I've been doing a lot of thinking about that, actually. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> for me, I mm-hmm. would move out to Kanagawa. I would move out to... Odawara. Wait. Odawara. <laughs> okay. Odawara. Um, um, yeah. Uh, so I think... Probably, um, probably because it makes me feel nostalgic, but not from my home, which is kind of weird. What? Um, okay. So, uh, back when I was a Marine, I lived on the California coast, down, okay. like kind of near San Diego. Okay. And, um, something that I absolutely loved mm-hmm. about Southern California mm-hmm. is you get these coastal mountain ranges Okay. where it's like you, you have this the Pacific Ocean on one okay. side and on the other side you have these just pretty large mountains mm-hmm. right and uh if you if you go out kind of like on the coast of Kanagawa you mm-hmm. kind of get the similar feeling mm-hmm. and god it's just it it makes me feel so calm mm-hmm. um I, I really like it you know actually so i do have to tell you so i um so i've been down to Odawara that area mm-hmm. Odawara Odawara, whatever. If I'm speaking Japanese, I'll say it in the Japanese. This is going to be a style. meme the whole time. <laughs> is it Odawara or Odawara? Odawara. Odawara. You got to, you got to like really sounds get like that, a, that da sound. Sounds, sounds like a surf town to me. But <laughs> no, but so like in the Odawara area, right? So you yeah. actually have a peninsula called the Mananzuru Peninsula, which sure. is, I, um, I did some research on it because actually I went there, I went to a, um, a seafood place there. Oh, okay. Which is like 70 bucks a head. Mm. So, which is not too bad, but they like have live fish sashimi. So they like, get the fish, they cut the sashimi while the fish is still alive and then they place it to you. Ooh. So you're eating it off the fish. And I, I did that to impress like one of my millionaire friends or whatever. Yeah. And he was impressed, but his girlfriend wasn't. So 
<laughs> she's like, I can't eat this. So it was just him and me for two hours, like eating this. And then she was like feeling too bad for the fish, right? Oh my God. But, but no, but so like this area, it's like this, it's like a peninsula off of the Odawara area. Mm. And I would get a house there mm. just because, or I would like, like to do an Airbnb there for a while, just because it's like, um, it's, it's like a coastal it's a coastal town, but it's on a cliff, yeah. right? So there's no beach there. Yeah. It's just like, boom, boom. Yeah. And it's just really beautiful, mm. you know? So I can understand, but I wouldn't want to live there forever, though. Oh, man. It's kind of, it's kind of it's, far away. It's a little out of the way, for yeah. sure. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I could stomach an hour-plus commute mm-hmm. into Tokyo. Yeah. So it's probably, it's mm-hmm. probably just a fantasy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But After about two weeks, you'll get bored of it and yeah. you want to go back to Tokyo. <laughs> so probably. realistically, if you couldn't live in Tokyo... Uh, well, it makes probably, the most sense practically. Probably depends on my age. Yeah. If I were to say now, um, probably Osaka. Osaka. Osaka is kind of like my second home in Japan. Yeah, because that's um, where you went to first, right? Yeah. 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 Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I had. Yeah. You know what? We're talking about places. I'll tell some stories of when okay. I was in Osaka. Um, so when I was doing <laughs> homestay, uh, yeah. I actually wasn't living in Osaka at the time. I was mm-hmm. over in uh, Hyogo Ken. Okay. Which is right next to it. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like closer to Kobe. Yeah. yeah. Um, in a tiny, tiny, tiny little uh, countryside town mm-hmm. called Sanda. Sanda. Yeah. Okay. Um, which I, I'm entertained by because I'm reminded of it every, every single day. Because um, So my train station that I used yeah. to go to work is Mita Station. Oh, yeah. The kanji for Mita and Sanda oh, is the exactly same. the same. Are the same. Yeah, three and then like yeah, yeah. field, right? Rice yeah, field. yeah. So I... <laughs> Dude, that it, it's like one of those small little I, things, but I love that so much. You I know. know I, mean? I I just want to talk first about Japanese placement names and how ridiculous and how difficult they are to read. Mm. Like, so as someone who knows kanji, right? Yeah. I know kanji, and I'm trying to read these train stations. I just don't get it. Mm. Like, like uh, I saw this. So, like in Chiba, there's a town, and the kanji for it is Mizu mm-hmm. To. It's like it's a water well. But it's pronounced Mito. There's no zoo in it, even though it's just like that. And it's the same thing. Like when you look at it, you're like, oh, this is Mita. No, it's Sanda. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, this is, this is Sanden. No, it's Sanda. You know, it's just like, it yeah. just doesn't match at all. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm done with my rant. But <laughs> yeah, so you have that connection <laughs> there. Yeah. So I, I, I just, I don't know. Every time I get off the train in the morning to go to work, I just, I'm just pleasantly reminded of like, you know, the good times that I had there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, it's a nice thing, but, um, yeah, so I lived out there mm-hmm. and, um, <laughs> so my, my host dad, mm-hmm. uh, would, would, would take me out drinking yeah. in Osaka at yeah. 16. Oh, great. <laughs> He's just great. like, Hey, uh, you want to, you want to go to a bar? <laughs> like well a 16 year old yeah, yeah. boy like yeah <laughs> yeah you look 18 it's fine <laughs> yeah well so that's what he was saying he's like i was worried i was like oh well you know are people are gonna notice i'm underage he's like ah you're white you're fine you look like <laughs> you're 20 it's like oh okay let's yeah, yeah. go and so um yeah i had i had kind of like a, a fun experience mm-hmm. out in osaka when i was 16 he took me to like their first place was a gay bar Actually, gay bar. he took me to a gay bar as the first. He the, took you to a gay bar. The first bar I've ever been to in my entire life was a gay bar, gay bar run by a very, very large man <laughs> wearing a pink flower dress. Okay. With bright red lipstick on and like deep blue mascara. Okay. And like. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. It sounds, it's like one of those things that's like, if this, if you experience this in like 2021, mm-hmm. it's probably one of those things that probably get in trouble for yeah but it's like you know back back in back in the good old days of what 2006 yeah (laughs) things were a little bit more fast and loose and uh so this guy walked over to me Mm -hmm. and he's like whoa american boy and just pow (laughs) just slaps me right on the ass and i was just like (laughs) what is going on here immediately because he's the bartender he immediately just goes and pours me like a glass of whiskey and everything and it's like that that was my first drinking experience that's awesome man (laughs) I wish so, I had an experience like that. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was a little shocking, but it was, yeah. it was really fun. Yeah. That guy, uh, so it, it, actually he was like, kind of like a local celebrity almost. Okay. Cause like he, he appeared on like, uh, shows, uh, just like talk shows and stuff. Cause he, he was okay. kind of like, I don't even know if he really called him transgender back in the day, but yeah, I think these days he would, he'd yeah. be a transgender guy. 
Um, so he's like he's like Matsuko Deluxe. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Like literally, if you took Matsuko and put a mustache on her, yeah, like that's okay. That's what this guy. Looks okay, like. okay. <laughs> <laughs> this guy had like a giant, like thick black mustache. <laughs> It was funny because yeah. yeah, he's just straight up like in a dress. Okay, okay, <laughs> so, awesome. Um, yeah. So after that, um, the next place we mm-hmm. went to is a Playboy Bunny Bar, mm. where like all the waitresses and everything were like just wearing Playboy Bunny outfits. Wait, was it really Playboy like branded, or was it just the bunny? I think it was cafe. a theme. It okay, was a bunny okay. cafe. But yeah, so it's like you know, it's a typical like girls' bar where yeah, you know, like uh, they'll sit down and talk with you, but. I had I was so out of my element in that yeah. situation. <laughs> this like sixteen yeah. year old boy. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of cute girls. I don't yeah. know how to talk to them. Yeah, right. I'm drunk off like two glasses of whiskey. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea what's going on right now. Yeah, um, well, Osaka definitely has. I mean, well, Tokyo too, but Osaka definitely has a lot of options to have fun, like have a good night out. You know. Yeah, it's 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 kind of fun to compare Osaka yeah. and Tokyo. Um, to be honest, because yeah. the experiences that you will have in both those cities are great. You'll have yeah. a fun time in both the cities, but they're so different. Yeah. Like Tokyo, I think is like, it's like going to Disneyland. Okay. You know, what? it's like, there's all these attractions in Tokyo, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And everything is kind of, um, I don't, I don't know if I would say scripted, but like, you know what to expect when yeah, you're yeah. going to a place, yeah, you know, true. like if I get off in Harajuku, I know I'm going to see some weird people. And I'm going to see, like, a whole bunch of teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. If I go to Shibuya, I'm going to see, like, a million 20-year-old girls shopping. Yeah. And then as soon as it hits 6 o'clock, it's, like, drunk old men. Yeah. And 20-year-old girls shopping and getting drunk. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, like, all these places, like, you really understand. And Osaka's kind of got that, too, but it's just, like, it, it feels more um, spontaneous. Yeah. I guess is maybe the word that I would mm-hmm. use, because, like... You'll, you'll be like randomly walking around, um, in, uh, I don't know, the, like what we say like Namba or mm-hmm. something like yeah, some, yeah. some big place there. You randomly walking around there and you'll turn a corner and all of a sudden, um, you're, you're just like in this weird alleyway and some guy will come up and talk to you and he'll look a little bit intimidating and then turns out that guy's just like, Oh, what's up? I used to live in America also. And just yeah, like, yeah. really want to know who you are. And yeah, it's yeah. like those random things that you'll experience in Osaka or it's like, that's what Osaka is. Yeah. No, I totally get that. Yeah. I feel like, so, so like Tokyo is a lot more rigid and close. Like mm. If I were to compare them, I would say that, um, I would say, well, Tokyo is closer to like New York. Yeah. You know, it's much more rigid, more stratified. Yeah. But yeah. then Osaka is kind of like just more loose yeah. with everything, you know. I mean, so like it's funny because you know the the economic center of Japan used to be Osaka, yeah. And um, even up until like the the Edo period, it was still like that, and then even into the Meiji a little bit. But mm. yeah, it's just like that was the Osaka is literally the center, yeah, of Japan with Kyoto, and so mm. like a lot of things were happening there. There's a lot of more diversity there i I mean Mm. so there's a lot of like outward diversity here but as far as diversity and like i don't know i I don't it just feels more free and like free going so i think i think there's a historical reason for that actually because i i um i i don't even remember why i listened to like history like of japan through the ages but Mm -hmm. i I recently did that like a month or two ago and um basically what it was saying is the Mm -hmm. time when osaka was the capital it was a time when um, merchants yeah. kind of took over the government yeah, here yeah. and were kind of running things. Right, right, And right. Um, so because of that, uh, people were kind of like more evenly put mm-hmm. on the same level mm-hmm. instead of uh, traditional like feudal systems where you have like classes yeah. and everything. Um, and I think that has passed on through generation mm-hmm. to generation to kind of like where people will come up to you and talk mm-hmm. to you like just kind of like man to man. Yeah, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. You know, it's funny that you say that because so like the original like caste system mm. or the feudal system in Japan was you had you had like the daimyo at the top, then you had the samurai, then you had the peasants, mm. and then you had the merchants. The yeah, merchants were like below the peasants, that's right? That's interesting, and, huh? Yeah. And it's funny because like people disdained money. They thought money was evil. And mm. then the merchants are the ones who make all the money and then they start to like call the shots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so like, it's funny though, cause now I see that. So, you know, like, um, Osaka is known as the entertainment 
capital of of japan so mm. like that's where um was it like yoshi yoshimura i think mm -hmm. it's called like the talent agency sure that's there that has all the comedians and stuff it's yeah. very like lowbrow humor stuff but that's yeah. like the stuff that runs yeah japan it's the pop culture area you know yeah, so yeah people say sure. the pop culture area is the tokyo place but no the producers and the studios are all the ones that are in they're all in osaka, osaka yeah. yeah i mean look at look at like osaka dialect yeah like yeah that's, that's known as like the comedian dialect yeah you know yeah, what I mean? yeah and everyone's yeah. like especially someone from tokyo they feel cool if they can like imitate mm, you know mm, mm. but yeah i still meant you know i um to be honest i haven't traveled to many places in japan let's see if i can put this on let's see how many i can count so i've been to tokyo kanagawa chiba saitama mm -hmm. uh yamanashi tochigi um ibaraki aomori Osaka, Kyoto, Nara, Hyogo. I went to Himeji. Nagoya. Mm -hmm. I went to Shizuoka a little bit, but I didn't. I just went to like the little area. But yeah, other than that, I haven't really traveled much. It's mainly Kanto. Yeah. Area, but I haven't gone to like Kyushu or like Fukuoka. Or I I have never been to Kyushu either. Oh really? Yeah. Um, it's, this is gonna it's be on a my boring episode, man. We need to. <laughs> I got some places. You need to go to more places. I I've been to places. Um, yeah. I for one, um, some place that I think if you're coming to Japan or if yeah. you just live in Japan, you have to go to Hokkaido. Hokkaido I, is. I want to go to Hokkaido, man. man. I want to. Oh go. God, it's so good. So here's the thing. Uh, yeah. For me, like I I'm kind of all over the place because I I'm not somebody who typically likes tropical environments, but I like going to the beach. Okay. Um. So I, for me, it's like, if I'm going on a, like a vacation, mm -hmm. a tropical environment's fine. If I'm there for like three days yeah. after that, I get bored and I'm like, I hate this place. I want to go home. Yeah, it's too hot. Um, but when it comes to cold places, I like me some cold places, man. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, Hokkaido is like literally a cold place. So you can yeah. just go there and, um, man, during the winter, mm -hmm. it is so good. It yeah. is so freaking well, good What there. did you do there? Um, so we went and, uh, did some sightseeing. Okay. Um, we went in January. Okay. Um, so it was right before all the snow festivals mm -hmm. came. So I wasn't able to see the snow mm -hmm. festivals that time. Um, but, uh, you know, we went up to, oh my God, I'm going to forget the name here. It's, it starts with an O. Oh. Otaru? Otaru, yeah. Otaru. That, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Otaru. pretty sure it was Otaru, right? It's like one of the northernmost uh, mm -hmm. cities up there. Mm -hmm. It's like a pretty famous like sightseeing area. So we rode like a gondola up the top of the mountain. Cool. It was really cool because uh, like there was like mist coming in from like the Arctic oh, Sea up there. Yeah. And it's like, it, it was just such a nice environment. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, <laughs> so I don't know if you knew this, yeah. but Sapporo beer is from Sapporo. Really? Yeah, I know, right? I had no idea. Yeah. I, By the way, dude, we're speaking American today. It's Sapporo. Sapporo beer. Sapporo, Sapporo beer. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something like, it almost sounds like a Mexican beer. I know. Sapporo. Yeah, let's get some Sapporo get beer Sapporo. up in here, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sapporo Cerveza. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's okay. Fun. Anyways, okay. uh so yeah, so my favorite place to go to yeah. is the uh Sapporo Beer Factory. Okay. And we went there and did like the factory tour, which was really fun. Yeah. I learned that um Yebisu beer mm -hmm. is owned by Sapporo. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Did did you? Yeah. I mean, so yeah, it recently got recently to you got it's been, like it's been about like 10 yeah. years I think now. Sure. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, so like when I went to the when I went to the Ebisu Beer Museum in Ebisu, yeah, Tokyo. Um, thanks, man. The uh, they said that they're owned by Sapporo, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, cool, yeah. So you, I, I learned the history of that. So basically, the whole reason why they did Ebisu is um, mm -hmm. they they just wanted to make a different beer from no, their really? Sapporo beer. That was yeah. the entire reason. It's like, hey, look, Sapporo beer is really great. But we kind of want to branch off and explore. Uh, so it's like, been like it's been like a like a brand of Sapporo for the longest since the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was like it was a separate company. Literally, originally. literally, the guys who made Sapporo beer. Okay. Just branched off. It was okay. like after World War II in like the nineteen fifties or sixties or whatever, okay. and they just branched off and it's like, hey, um, so let's just make a beer and let's open up a factory okay. in Tokyo. And okay. so, if you go to Ebisu, 
yeah. um, the actual area on the Yamanote line. Mm-hmm. The only reason why that's an area is because mm-hmm. of Sapporo beer. Yeah, well, the name comes from the beer yeah. company. It was actually a different name before that. I forget yeah. what it was, but yeah. yeah, I remember reading that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... So, yeah, I mean, like, when you talk about beer... Mm-hmm. When you, actually, so a lot of people, when you talk about just good food in general, a lot of people imagine Hokkaido. Yeah. You know, actually, Hokkaido was an agricultural experiment. Really? Yeah, they, they wanted to see if Western agriculture could work in Japan. Mm-hmm. So up until, the, up until the Meiji period, Hokkaido was not a part of Japan. They just kind of annexed it. Really? What, like, yeah. Was it just kind of like a free area? Yeah, it was called Ezo back really? a while ago. And so you had okay. like Ezo people. Yeah. And they were just like, yeah, okay, so if now this is a part of Japan. Thank you very much. Yeah. And then they just started to make Western-style farms to see if they could grow wheat mm. and milk. Yeah. And that's why, like, milk and, like, that's why milk is there, because they, they imported cows. Oh, wow, to that's test cool. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, like, whenever, I, I don't drink a lot of milk because I'm kind of lactose, but yeah. I, I buy a lot of, like, cheese and butter, mm-hmm. and it always says it's from Hokkaido. Yeah, right, that's okay, the reason that why. makes sense. That's, that's the reason so why. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but another thing that Hokkaido is famous for, you kind of mentioned it, was the food. And yeah. uh, specifically, my favorite thing when I went up there was we had the Genghis Khan. Oh, with the is, lamb? It was the lamb. Oh, man, I so love me some in, lamb. So in, in Seattle, you guys call that Mongolian grill, right? Mm. Is it different at all? The Mongolian grill, it's kind of funny. It's actually a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah, so like, like over, over on the East Coast in Boston, we yeah. don't actually have Mongolian grill, but we have something like it. Yeah. But I don't know what we specifically call it. There are a couple of restaurants like that. But when I went to Seattle, people were like, let's get Mongolian Grill. I'm like, what, what is that? Yeah. So it's actually just Chinese food. Okay. Because um, I think Americans would not find traditional Mongolian food as appetizing yeah, at all. Um, I've got some Mongolian friends and, mm-hmm. you know, it's like I've, I've always asked them, like, what do, you, what do you like eating in Mongolia? And it's like, yeah, you know, um, have you ever had goat sphincter before? <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, I can't. I can't say I have. Oh, and they're man. just like, yeah, it's really chewy. It's, it's my favorite. I get it every time I go back. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to go to Mongolia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. So, so okay. So, so the Genghis Khan is the Japanese word for Mongolian grill. Yes. And it features lamb. Like, that's the big mm. thing about Genghis Khan, right? So, mm. so the, the Genghis Khan in... Hokkaido is really good. Yes, it's it's fantastic. It's fantastic. 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 Drink a little bit too much sake. A little maybe? bit. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's got a very pungent smell to it. Okay. It's and I think um, I've I've talked to a lot of my Japanese friends about it, and it's it's not actually a very popular dish here in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, not specifically. Hates lamb. Yeah, specifically because of the smell. Yeah. Um, but whatever. It's a lot of stinky food people eat I mean, here. I don't understand why that's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm part Greek. <laughs> I live off lamb. Lamb yeah. is like one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, God, man, yeah. It's, you get this grill, and so the whole thing is like they they put the meat up on mm-hmm. top, right, mm-hmm. and then they put veggies down on mm-hmm. the sides. And the idea is like as the food cooks, all the juices like run into the veggies. Okay. So oh, oh man, this is so good. Yeah, it's so freaking good. Um, but yeah, so we went into this giant like. Uh, beer hall okay which is like it was it was it's right next to the Sapporo beer factory okay, okay. and it's kind of built like these like long houses like yeah, when yeah. you think like a traditional long house where yeah, it's yeah. like everyone's just in this giant room mm-hmm. um and the entire place is like really smoky mm-hmm. and um you know everything's grilled and most people are eating Genghis Khan so it's like mm-hmm. it's got that smell in the air yeah. and oh man that was such a fun experience where, was that in Otaru? No, that was in Sapporo. Sapporo, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's where the factory is. Okay. Um, but there's another reason why I want to return to Hokkaido. Okay. And that's because the best whiskey in the world... Onika? ...is made up there from, from what uh, so, I understand. So I, heard, so I thought Suntory was like the best whiskey. I, a, I don't know. Uh, so there's... there's I, I, you know, and to be honest, they probably switch from year to year or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But... Um, I was looking at like the advertising pamphlets and there's like all the, there, there's like a whiskey tour that you can mm-hmm. do up there. And um, yeah, it was like the number one, the number two and like the number five best whiskeys mm-hmm. in the world are, are supposedly in Okada. Yeah. Well, Al-Qaeda. that, that would, that would make sense. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's where all the, the materials are grown, you know? Yeah. 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 But you know, I'm not a big whiskey guy, so yeah, that's, that, that's for you, man. Yeah. But, I, I absolutely love yeah. whiskey. Although, um, Hokkaido is one of the places that I've wanted to go for a long time. Like, mm. there's just a lot of, 
I feel like for a lot of people from Tokyo or from the from Honshu,、mm. they see Hokkaido as like this tourist spot where like you can get really good food and there's also like a really nice flower field or something、yeah. there. And then also, yeah, stuff you're talking about. I I would love to go up there and go like、yeah. snowboarding. Yeah,、um, I haven't gone snowboarding in like almost 15 years. Yeah, I, it, it's something that I would like to get back into. Yeah, and and have a good time doing.、Um, you, you know, it's funny though, actually. So like. So I forgot to mention that I've also been to Niigata and、um, and、uh, Ishikawa. Oh, I went、okay. to Kanazawa. But anyway,、yeah. so my wife is from Niigata, right? Yeah. So what what I thought was interesting is that Niigata and Hokkaido, other than like the agriculture milk stuff, they、yeah. tend to lay claim to very similar things. So like in Hokkaido, people say the best seafood is from Hokkaido, <laughs> but actually in Niigata they say the best seafood is from Niigata. Yeah. In Hokkaido, the rice is really good, but、yeah. in Niigata they say the rice is really good. Yeah. But what I've actually found now is that because of like global warming and like the because of the the temperatures going up,、mm. that actually the best rice in the world is Niigata rice grown in Hokkaido because it's colder now. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't snow like it used to in Niigata. But no, but I'll tell you, dude. I、yeah. went up there and I had amazing seafood. I've had amazing rice. I've had amazing sake. And I'm sure you can get that in Hokkaido, but it's just funny how it's like, yeah, they claim the same thing, you know, dude. Especially the fact that you mentioned the rice, like that. <laughs> That's so Japan, yeah. To be like so, like the best, dude. Because like it, it was the funniest thing in the world.、Um, my ex, when back when we were living together, she used to be very particular about、mm-hmm. rice. She would never get rice from like Taiwan or America. Yeah, right, like, right, right. No, 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 no. We got to get Japanese rice. Yeah, it's like it's it tastes, super expensive. It tastes the same, dude. You would say that it tastes the same, and probably when you're not thinking about it, you don't care. It probably does taste the same, but when you compare it side to side, so actually, I got um. I got some rice from、yeah. Shimane as a gift.、Yeah. Shimane is not known for having good rice at、mm-hmm. all. But I took that rice back to the states, and we took our like California grown rice,、mm. and we did the Shimane rice, and we compared it side by side.、Mm. No contest, dude. Even my parents were like, <laughs> "Wow, this Japanese rice is really good." But of course, like in your everyday life, you're not going to、mm. notice a difference. But I'm I'm just a caveman when it comes to the culinary dude, taste of things. I get it. I get it. Yeah, you look like a caveman. <laughs> Although, no, I, I clean, shave. I clean shaven, clean. I am clean caveman. shaven. I do not have a scraggly beard. I know. Beard I know. Not, not now. Not now. <laughs> but, but yeah. So, yeah. So I think you know. For one thing that um, I think people should definitely check out. And what I really enjoy when I um, when I travel in Japan is not necessarily traveling to like specific locations, but trying、mm. to think about what you want to do and go to the best locations for that. So、yeah. like, if you want to go to onsen,、mm. you want to go to um. Guma,、mm. you want to go to the what? What's like? Oh my God, Kusatsu! You want yeah, to go yeah, to Kusatsu, Kusatsu, right? I was yeah, just yeah. there last year. Yeah, that one sounds amazing. By the way, where it's like right on the river. And yeah, yeah, yeah.、Oh, such yeah, a good yeah, experience. Yeah. yeah, and if if you want to get like really, if you want to get really good produce, like I going to Yamanashi, you can get、mm. amazing grapes. They have、mm. wineries there.、Um, also, it has the Santori、mm. um, brewery there, whatever you call it, or、mm. like the distillery. But yeah, I think like the important thing is just to figure out what do you want to do, and then you kind of have an idea where you want to go.、Yeah. I'm a guy who loves traditional Japanese culture,、mm. like the Edo period. So my place is Kyoto or or Kanazawa. Yeah, like that's just that's fair. Yeah, yeah. For me,、um, I, I, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person who really typically enjoys traveling around and viewing like traditional like Japanese places. Yeah, you caveman. I you know I'm literally <laughs> like I I am、yeah. a caveman. I go out and look for caves. That's my、yeah. thing. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I was actually gonna mention that because uh, we we went out to well when I was out hiking in the mountains、yeah. or the hills. And Odawara, okay. There's there's like these ancient caves that people would go bury people in. Really? Like, like ancient times. Really? Yes. Yeah, dude. It's all on the hillside. You'll go up to these places, and there'll be like little tiny caves where they really? obviously there's no dead bodies in there anymore. But like that's、yeah. where they would bury people. Wow. And man, I that kind of thing is like what really really interests me. I、mm-hmm. I love like spiritual areas.、Mm-hmm. Like I'm not religious at all, but um. I, I really like areas that that draw people for、mm-hmm. for a specific reason, whether it's death or、mm-hmm. um, some kind of ritual thing、mm-hmm. or a, a thing that's like an area that somebody deems is important.、Mm-hmm. And、mm-hmm. um, I like to visit those areas and、mm-hmm. just kind of like 
absorb the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a really, really big reason why I wanted to go into Aokigahara. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, so, uh, traditionally, it is known as a place for suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, you go outside yeah, of Japan, forest. it's like everyone knows it as a suicide forest. It's like you, hundreds of people kill themselves um, every year mm -hmm. uh, in that forest. And... Um, a big reason that I want to go in there mm -hmm. is I, I just want to experience why people are picking that specific mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. um, as their as their final moments. Mm -hmm. I, I want to know what the, what they're what they're seeing. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had it explained to me like it's it's uh, it's a very isolated place. Mm -hmm. um, the soil in there it's this like volcanic uh, mountain soil. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of iron mixed in, so mm -hmm. it, it'll disrupt phone signals and. Uh, compasses mm -hmm. and um the forest can get so thick that it actually um kind of acts as like a sound room okay where sound doesn't travel very mm -hmm. far in there and that that wow. sounds like such an inter interesting experience to mm -hmm. me and i really want to go out there so <laughs> yeah, yeah well do i mean yeah that's like a place that i'm sure a lot of people who are interested in japan know about sure you know yeah if you're interested in like power spots and stuff have you ever been on to like kumano I have no idea what so, that is. So Kumano was a um, a pilgrimage site that a lot of people go to to get like it was a power spot and like there's there's a bunch of different like stations around but it's like a mm. hiking trail. Oh really? And it's a hiking trail around all of, and there are like these these shrines mm. or temples I don't know which one around the way but basically like people who are trying to reach enlightenment would go on the Kumano pilgrimage mm. a lot and so it's um. It's a very big, like, religious area. I think it's in, Sh it's in Shikoku. I should look it up, but I think yeah. it's in Shikoku or something, like, or Wakayama. I'm not too sure, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's just like that. Seems like something that you might be interested. Yeah, in. it's like, absolutely. Man. It's a place. It's literally been around for over a thousand years now. You know, when Buddhism I, first came into Japan, I absolutely love that kind of thing. For me, it's like I I'm a huge history guy. I love mm -hmm. studying history. Um, and not just yeah. Japanese history. I, I love studying, like, I'm, I'm really fascinated with Egyptian history. Okay. At, at some point in my life, I want to go over to Egypt and kind of yeah. just wander See around. Um, but here in Japan, there's, there's so much uh, of Japanese history that yeah. I think that people don't really kind of look into. Because mm -hmm. everyone kind of looks into, like, you know, all the castles and the time where Japan mm -hmm. was all feudalistic and everything. But there's, there's like, so much to japan yeah where, where like back in ancient times mm -hmm. where you know they they built like these giant mm -hmm. um these giant crypts like mm -hmm. in monuments and you can see them all over tokyo yeah, what are those called those, again the, i forget what they're called but they're they're the little yeah, hills yeah. where they buried the the mm -hmm. past emperors yeah, yeah and it like i've i've gone to some of them because i mean you could literally get on the train there's hundreds mm -hmm. of them here it's it's crazy mm -hmm. um but um you can just get on the train and you'll show up and like it's so surreal that such a uh, place of such significance is is just not really um mm -hmm. there's not a lot of effort into really uh, marking it out as a place yeah. um like you'll go to some of them and there'll be like yeah here's this like random hill in the ground and then next to it is like a family mart and the yeah. train station and that's it it's like maybe there's a sign mm -hmm. <laughs> if you can find it you know um, I'm, try I'm trying to I'm trying to find like what these are these are called because they're like a key shape keyhole shape. Yeah, kind of most of them are. Some of them are so old that they've kind of just like deformed mm -hmm. back into like a hill shape. Okay. Um, but yeah, originally they're they're very key shaped. Yeah, I think. Oh man, I can't remember the name of that one, but um, that's that's one of the more famous ones. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, because so so here's kind of the crazy thing. The reason mm -hmm. why I say this is because, um, you know, I'm a history nerd too. Yeah. So. I heard that actually, like the, so I don't know how much you know about the history of Europe and stuff, but before the Germans kind of overtook Western Europe, you had the Celts there. The Celts mm -hmm. kind of got shot up to England, you know? Yeah. But they had a similar burial procedure. Yeah. Too. And you know, what's funny too, is that actually in um, the preceding culture to the Celts was called the corded ware culture. Mm-hmm. Which, if you translate into Japanese, is the Jomon culture. And when you look oh, at their oh, when you look at their pottery, it's very similar. That's interesting. Yeah. So, like when I see like the graves look similar. Yeah. The pottery looks similar. It's either a coincidence or they're connected somehow. Yeah, man. 
We just got really deep into history. Got right really now. deep into history. No, but I, I, I think that's really interesting because, um, you know, we we only have. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm I'm just spitballing this after after yeah. a few drinks, but I think we only have like, like five to ten thousand years of recorded history. Yeah, right. And um, scientists have determined that like humans have been around for hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. humans as we know, them. at least two hundred thousand know. years, and. It would be crazy to think that there's there's not so much history that we just don't know about. Yeah. You know, so it, it would I would not be surprised that mm-hmm. there is a connection there. Yeah. You know, that maybe um you can you can trace like trace like a common mm-hmm. ancestry. Um and maybe that tradition was like mm-hmm. carried from like, you know, past civilizations yeah. before that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um yes. I didn't. So we've we've gone a little bit off of the the trail of a little lo- bit traveling and places to go see in Japan <laughs> a little bit and also I have to prepare to give my son a bath now yeah. so I think this is a good place to yeah. cut today. What do you want to talk about next time? Whew, that's a hard one. Um, what do you think? You have any ideas? I would like to talk about the difficult things about being in Japan as a foreigner. We talked about what's kind of surprised mm. us, but I want to talk about like. You know, a lot of people, a lot of especially people like anime and manga yeah. see Japan as like this oasis of like, I can mm. finally be myself, but it's not necessarily true. You know, sure. so I want to talk about like the differences between visiting Japan and living in Japan. I, I like that. Let's yeah. do it. Let's, Let's do, do that. It. Okay. Awesome, man. <laughs>